from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Tuesday, November the 26th, 2024. U.S. President Joe Biden this evening made an announcement regarding a truce between Israel and terror group Hezbollah in Lebanon. Today I have some good news to report from the Middle East. I just spoke with the Prime Minister of Israel and uh, Lebanon. I'm pleased to announce that their governments have accepted the United States proposal to end the devastating conflict between Israel and Hezbollah. And I want to thank President Macron of France for his partnership in reaching this moment. For nearly 14 months, a deadly conflict raged across the border that separates Israel and Lebanon, a conflict that began the day after the October 7 attack by Hamas and Israel. Hours later, at 2 a.m. in the morning, Hezbollah and other terrorist organizations backed by Iran attacked Israel in support of Hamas. Let's be clear. Israel did not launch this war. The Lebanese people did not seek that war either, nor did the United States. Under the deal reached today, effective at 4 a.m. tomorrow local time, the fighting across the Lebanese-Israeli border will end, will end. This is designed to be a permanent cessation of hostilities. What is left of Hezbollah and other terrorist organizations will not be allowed, well, I emphasize, will not be allowed to threaten the security of Israel again. Over the next 60 days, the Lebanese army and state security forces will deploy and take control of their own territory once again. Hezbollah terrorist infrastructure in southern Lebanon will not be allowed to be rebuilt. And over the next 60 days, Israel will gradually withdraw its remaining forces. And civilians, civilians on both sides, will soon be able to safely return to their communities and begin to rebuild their homes, their schools, their farms, their businesses, and their very lives. We're determined this conflict will not be just another cycle of violence. And so the United States, with the full support of France and our other allies, has pledged to work with Israel and Lebanon to ensure that these, this, this arrangement is fully implemented. Ahead of the Biden announcement, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, in an address to the Israeli public, said he would bring the ceasefire outline for the cabinet's approval. The length of the ceasefire, he said, depends on what happens in Lebanon. With the United States' full understanding, he said, we maintain full freedom of military action. If Hezbollah violates the agreement and tries to arm itself, we will attack. If it tries to rebuild terrorist infrastructure near the border, we will attack. If it launches a rocket, if it digs a tunnel, if it brings in a truck carrying rockets, we will attack. In addressing why, he said, should we have a ceasefire now, Netanyahu listed three main reasons. The first, he said, is to focus on the Iranian threat. The second, to give our forces a breather and replenish stocks. And the third, he said, is to separate the fronts and isolate Hamas. From day two of the war, he said Hamas was counting on Hezbollah to fight by its side. With Hezbollah out of the picture, Hamas is left on its own. We will increase our pressure on Hamas, and that will help us in our sacred mission of releasing our hostages. An IDF soldier was killed during fighting with terror group Hamas in Gaza today. He is 21-year-old Sergeant Tamer Othman. And an IDF soldier who was severely injured on October the 7th of last year during the Hamas massacre fighting Hamas terrorists died from those injuries today. He is 23-year-old combat medic, Sergeant First Class Yona Betzalel Brief. Hezbollah, meanwhile, continued to bombard northern Israel throughout the day today with dozens of rockets fired at the Golan, the Galilee, and the area of Haifa. Most were intercepted or fell in open areas, but some did make impact in populated areas, including in the cities of Nahariya and Kiryat Shmona, causing several injuries, including one serious, as well as extensive damage. 
The IDF responding to the attacks and today eliminating terrorists and terror infrastructure, hitting nearly 200 Hezbollah targets in Lebanon, it said, including, it shared with video, 20 terrorist targets in 120 seconds in Beirut. Among the targets hit, the IDF said, Hezbollah's money management and storage targets. Also hitting buildings used by the coastal missile unit of the terror group, as well as headquarters and other military infrastructure of Hezbollah. Well, this week marks one year since a deal was reached for the release of some of the hostages kidnapped by terror group Hamas during the October 7th massacre. Israel's official ex-Twitter platform writing, toddlers, children, and mothers were reunited with their families after enduring unimaginable trauma as hostages in Gaza. The embraces, the tears, the relief, our entire country felt it. But 101 souls are still waiting to be saved. 101 families are still waiting to be reunited with their loved ones. Every second matters. Let them go now. The hostages who remain held in Gaza by Hamas have now been captive for 417 days. Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Tuesday, November the 26th at 7 o'clock, David Patterson discusses strategies for combating anti-Semitism at the ISGAP Oxford Summer Institute. At 8, Justin Pine speaks with Rabbi Dr. Ari Lamb about how Jewish ideas have shaped world and American history, including American government, the first Thanksgiving, and American universities. At 9, it's part 2 of Tal Keenan on L'Chaim. At 10, JFNA board chair Julie Platt is joined by former Meta COO Sheryl Sandberg at the 2024 General Assembly of the Jewish Federations of North America. At 10.30, an encore of the news, and coming up next, the ILTV's Insider. And that's the JBS News Update for Tuesday, November the 26th, 2024. I'm Tisha Bader. Am Yisrael Chai.